Hello and welcome to History episode 7, I believe what that's 8, 7, I believe we're on now. Um, I'm really sorry I didn't upload a video last week, I've been feeling pretty poorly, pretty rubbish, pretty crappy and um, I've been in bed and I've been off work largely so um, I've just been taking some time to recuperate but I still owe you an episode from last week so I'm going to do last week's episode um, which is this one and then I'm going to film this week's episode straight afterwards so there we go so today we are going to be learning about Queen Isabella the she-wolf of France I'm sure a lot of you have heard of her she is famous for many things. She's famous for being a warrior woman. She's famous for not putting up with a husband who wouldn't do right by her. And she's famous for possibly murdering her husband, but we'll get to that part later. So Isabella was a daughter of Philip IV, King of Spain and Joan of Navarre, and was Queen Consort of Edward II of England. Uh, she was born around the 1290s, uh, we think 1295, but um, there's not an exact date on that one. Little is known about her early life. She was, um, she grew up in Paris and she was really well educated. She loved to read um, and she grew up in a Chateau de Louvre. Again, sorry if my French pronunciation upsets anybody today. <laughs> so she was engaged at the age of four and shipped off to England to marry at the age of only 12, which was the, uh, the, the, the legal minimum at that time to be married. Um, her fiancé, Edward, her husband Edward, was twice her age. He was 24. Um, but unfortunately... Her fiancé, Edward, had already met his soulmate and his soulmate was a man called Piers Gaveston. Um, Edward was said to care more about hunting and music than actually being king. Piers was an insufferable jerk. He, he, he was a peacock. Um, he took all kinds of jewellery and stuff that was supposed to be uh, present for Isabella and he'd, he'd, he'd wear them himself and um, yeah, pretty much everybody hated him. Um, he was a brat. Um, but still, uh, the king loved him and named him Earl of Cornwall and he also named him co-ruler and regent when he sailed off to France to marry Isabella. Um, so the nobles were pissed, <laughs> to say the least. Um, on Wednesday, no, not Wednesday, they were wed on January the 25th, 1308. I put wed January, yeah, I thought it was Wednesday. It just shows you I'm still quite fuzzy-headed, I'm still <laughs> getting over not being well. So my apologies in advance for any words I get wrong. Um... So they were married in 1308 in January in Bologna. Uh, Isabella looked absolutely beautiful. Um, she came from a long line of beautiful people. Her father, Philip IV, was called Philip the Fair um, because he was a good looking chap as well. Um, Isabella's happiness was short lived when they docked in England and Edward practically sprinted back into the arms of Piers Galveston. In her, during her coronation in 1308, Piers was so decked out that he said, it said he more resembled the god Mars than an ordinary mortal, and Edward gave him the seat of honour, not Isabella. The nobles threatened revolt unless Piers was given the boot, and quite rightly so. Isabella finally got the estates and titles that were owed to her as queen that Piers had been hoarding all this time um but edward just couldn't live without pierce and back he came so the nobles threatened to revolt again civil war erupted and edward's court bolted from london um isabella stuck by her husband during this tumultuous time it appears that her and and 
Gaveston had uh, some kind of accord. They'd they'd sort of worked out some kind of arrangement between the two of them, and they'd learnt to live together as a threesome. Um, although she felt undermined by Pierce, and um, he didn't give her the respect that he should, and Edward didn't give her the respect that they should, they'd, they'd kind of learnt to, to live with one another, as it were. So she stuck by him, um, and she's pregnant at this time as well, so that, that's, prob that's an important thing to bear in mind. Um, the barons finally caught up with them, and they brutally executed uh, Piers Gaveston in 1312. Isabella became a trusted ally and secured French support for Edward, and a rocky truce was established. Sorry. A rocky truce was established. Where did I get to? Isabella gave birth to Edward III, and they went on to have three more children. But she was soon pushed aside for a new favourite, a man called Hugh Dispenser. Now, if Piers Galveston was an insufferable, idiot, arrogant peacock, Hugh Dispenser was Lord Voldemort. This started the Dispenser Wars against the Barons and Isabella began to watch her back. Alison Weir, who is an amazing author, says that Hugh sexually assaulted Isabella during this time. Hugh orchestrated all of her properties to be seized, her French household sent to the Tower of London, and her younger children placed under the protection of the Dispenser family. So when France get wind of this, obviously, they're pissed. France at that time, I believe, is ruled by Isabella's brother, Charles the IV. Um, so this is the final straw. Isabella and her oldest son, Edward, who will be Edward III, the heir to the throne, sail to France and refuse to come home. Um, she began dressing in mourning clothes and started consorting with a young man called Roger Mortimer. Now, Roger Mortimer was uh, an enemy of the Dispensers. He'd been imprisoned in the Tower of London during the Dispenser Wars, but had managed to drug his guards, shimmy up a chimney and swim the Thames to a waiting ship. I think that's the story. That's the story in itself. In September 1326... Roger Mortimer and Isabella set sail for home and were welcomed as liberators. They'd brought a small army with them, but they were welcomed as liberators. Edward's forces defected to Isabella and Edward surrendered the crown in less than two months. That's what you call revenge. That's what you call a hostile takeover. The dispensers were executed. Uh, Hugh was hung, drawn and quartered, so he was hung, and then while he was still alive, his body was taken down, he was castrated, and he was cut into four bits as he was burning, and the four bits were strewn across the land, so that's exactly what Isabella thought of him. Um, as Edward III uh, was too young to rule when he was crowned, Isabella and Roger governed for him. Um, the old king... Edward II, still had followers, so Edward ended up having a fatal accident at Berkeley Castle. Um, it's rumoured that he died as a result of having a hot poker shoved up his bottom. Um, believe what you will of that. Um, all we know is that he had a fatal accident. Um, the sources kind of differ as to the hot poker story, but um, yeah, believe that if you wish. Um, so Roger, after the untimely demise of Edward II, Isabella and Roger ruled for four years. Uh, they gave themselves huge tracts of land, squandered obscene amounts of money, uh, and, and negotiated peace with Scotland, which there'd been an ongoing war with Scotland for a very long time. So this wasn't really giving up, wasn't seen as the right thing to be doing. In 1330, now grown up Edward III spearheaded a campaign against them. Roger was executed at Tyburn as a traitor. And Isabella spent the rest of her days in sumptuous retirement with a sizable income. 
Firstly, she was housed at Berkhamsted Castle. That's the town I grew up in. Um, if you're ever in Berkhamsted, do visit the castle. Then she was taken to Windsor and then Castle Rising in Norfolk. Uh, she remained close to her family and grandchildren. She died on the 22nd of August 1358 after a brief illness at around 63 years old at Hartford Castle. Where did the name She-Wolf come from? Um, it's thought to have been dubbed by Shakespeare, actually. Um, so, yeah, she's, a, she's an interesting figure. Was she homophobic or a devoted wife who was forced over the edge by her useless husband? Um, it, it appears that Edward was at least bisexual because they managed to have four children. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure the dynamics on that one. Um, so I've got some I've got some facts about Isabella as well. She was notoriously beautiful, as I said before. She came from a long line of beautiful people. She was fiercely intelligent, and she was described by Geoffrey of Paris as the beauty of all beauties in all of Europe. Wow, beauty and brains. Um. She was really into astrology and geometry and Arthurian legends and people liked to buy her lots of uh, gifts to do with these pursuits. Um, just before she died, she took the nun's habit and joined the order of the poor Clares. Um, I used to work at Denny Abbey near Cambridge, um, which was... Um, God, I can't get my words out today. Uh, the poor Claire, there was an order of poor Claires that lived there. So I'm quite familiar with the poor Claires. And um, I don't know, I think it's, it's quite nice that Isabella ended her days in that way. And she left the bulk of her property to her favourite grandson, Edward the Black Prince, and a few personal effects to her daughter, Joan. So that is it. That is Isabella of France, she-wolf, as so termed, po probably, possibly, by Shakespeare. Um, we have to remember that at that time homosexuality was a crime. Um, so it must have been hugely embarrassing for Isabella to have a husband who was so openly gay. Um, because she reached some kind of agreement, some, some kind of way to live with Piers Gaveston, it appears that she wasn't really that bothered about what her husband got up to in private, but to publicly humiliate her wasn't acceptable. Um, in the end, when Hugh Spencer came along and he took her land and he took her, her maids and he took everything from her, that was the last straw. And she went to France and she raised this army with Roger Mortimer and she came back and took the throne for herself and her son which is absolutely amazing. If you'd like to read more about Isabella, I highly recommend a book called She-Wolves by Helen Castor, um, the women who ruled England before Elizabeth. She also did a TV series on this, if that's more your cup of tea. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube if you look. Um, so there is a whole chapter in here on Queen Isabella, but there are also chapters on Matilda, Eleanor of Aquitaine, Margaret, I'm guessing that's Margaret of Anjou. Yes, I just had to pause it and check. It is Margaret of Anjou. Um, Margaret of Anjou and then a little bit about Elizabeth. So this is an amazing, fantastic book if you love your female history. And I would highly recommend you read it. Helen is an amazing, beautiful, kind, articulate woman. And, um, and I love her to death. So... Um, please do buy her book uh, and read it so there we go that is episode seven queen isabella the she-wolf of france and i am now going to film this week's her story so that's the one i owe you now i'm going to go and film another one so i'll see you momentarily <laughs>